Texans react to Pride Month in all caps and in uh, quotation marks. What would you say if I called you homophobic? <laughs> you would have your thoughts. That's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> I could save her. Just kidding. Christ. Our what would I say if I called you homophobic? Is this the is this the hook that's gonna bring everybody in to the video? I'm not sure. Let's keep. Already saved her. That's the metric. Wait, 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 wait. What's BDSM? Are you gay? No, nah, hell no. Nah. Hell, hell no. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Come on, find the gay gene. Put it right here. Put it right here. You can't do it. Oh boy. Ah. John, what's up? What's up? Oh, um, just the new Michael Knowles book. What's up? Okay, listen. Uh, Michael Knowles. You came down to Texas to make content and you haven't put out a video in weeks. It's kind of gay. No, you're right. Casual homophobia coming up here using gay as an insult. Nice. That's, that's, it's John Doe. What are we expecting? All right, let's, let's keep watching this super well constructed skit here. And that's the thing, too. I've been saying, wait, what'd you say? What? Texas content gay. Bro, that's it. That's literally it, bro. That's literally it. John, I just want to know what's going on so I can help. Bro, it doesn't even matter. You did it. You did it, man. You did it. What about your date? John, you forgot your camera! Oh, this acting, holy shit! Oh. Okay, <laughs> this is a, a safe station. We can um, we can chill for a bit here, and then we'll we'll keep we'll keep venturing in. Oh my fucking god, this acting is so dry. Okay, let's keep going. Where the hell is John? I don't know. We left without him. Where did you just come from? Oh, I hate the Antichrist. Did you run all the way here? I hate the Antichrist. You drove? Did you see the book I was reading? <laughs> How has he gone from video essays to this? What, what happened, John? What, what, what's going on? You grew a beard and now you're... Bootleg Steven Crowder? <laughs> God damn it. Okay, let's just keep watching. This video is sponsored by Bang Energy. No, it's not. We have sponsors, though. Uh, this doesn't even work. Let's go. All right, gamers. Here we are, cowboys, at the stockyards. We're going to talk to Texans about Pride Month. Let's do it. I don't like talking to women. <laughs> Okay. okay. I don't even know what this is. One of them has an earring. How's it going? Yeah, do you want to talk to us? Do you know what we just got done with? What? We just got done with Pride Month. You know about Pride Month? He knows about Pride Month. Nobody's answering. Oh, the silence. About Pride Month. No, 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 no. I just want to show you some photographs. I want to get an authentic reaction. All right. Okay, first photograph. What's your thoughts? Do we get to see the photos? I got there pride. we go. Okay, all right. Let's 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 take it up a notch. They got pride. Uh -oh. Your thoughts? That's just not my cup of tea. The, these are the opening. <laughs> this this is his opening to his video. Okay, you're supposed to hit the hard in the opening. You're supposed to keep your audience engaged. He's gone up to a random group of people, got no engagement of what he's saying, just showed a few photos to a guy who just looks at it silently for five seconds, and just repeats the same phrase over and over. Even this child here doesn't even want part of this. He's blocking his hand. He doesn't even care. Oh no, this is... Oh, fuck. And then also, we can see what the theme of the video is, right? He's gonna just cherry pick certain of the most, you know, maybe suppose like extravagant aspects of like pride and, you know, stuff relating to it and then show people those photographs and get their uncensored reaction here. Um, now he's going to talk a little bit about this photo in specific and I can uh, respond to that as well. You held back. I could tell you held back. It's all right. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So 
I'm gonna blur that guy's face out because he told us he was a school teacher. But think about that. The American male is in, in such a state where he knows that what he's talking about, he knows that what he's looking at is uh, maybe a little bit, a little bit weird will say but he doesn't feel as though he's in a position to talk about it even though you know we come up we've got the cowboy hats we've got the cacti shirt we're allies we're his greatest ally but he doesn't feel as though he can talk to normal average people about what's going on in the media why is that well because we put a camera in his face i mean they kind of invited it but still it's like what kind of society do we live in to where now we can show people images of children being sexualized and they don't even feel like they can comment on it if it's going to be on the public record very scary i don't know if i'm a fan of it so he answered his own question here, right? Why aren't people answering these these questions? Why aren't they talking about these pictures I just presented? Because you've just walked up with a camera crew and a microphone and showed them a few pictures in order to, you know, be able to receive a form of like extravagant response for a YouTube video. And they're probably not going to be super comfortable with that when they're just people walking around with big cameras holding a microphone to your face and showing you imagery. I don't know. He answers his own question there, but I'm, I'm not sure the, if the self-awareness is quite there yet. Um, now, in regards to the, uh, like, the, um, the image of the kids, I don't think that that's a good idea at all in regards to um, putting up, you know, like, sort of, like, beauty pageants or just generally, like, like, drag shows for people that are underage. I typically don't think that, like, rankings of, like, attractiveness or performance or those types of things should be you know put into context with uh, with children with like child participants in it um so it's a really good thing then that um the uh the place in which uh you know what's it called uh john doyle is having this interview you know among allies is a place that definitely doesn't have any weird you know um activities and uh and you know showings in regards to uh to to children at all um for those of you who may only be listening to the audio version i am currently on screen showing the websites of a couple of uh, child beauty pageants that exist right now in texas and you know hey if you have a problem with the images they showed before you should most you should most certainly have a problem with this types of things and do you want to know something else um, in addition to this, you can also say that, hey, okay, who are the people that are most in favor of the child beauty pageants who have fought against them being made illegal? Is it the Democrats or is it the Republicans? Spoilers, it's the Republicans, it's the conservative bloc that fights for their right to sexualize and have shows and beauty pageants of underage people that they can go and attend and record. Good thing that um, that you're among allies there in Texas, John Doyle, um, when it comes to uh, the sexualization of children. Let's see what other people have to say. Transition. I feel like if God is in it, then it's good. And I feel like a lot of those things hold all evil. So yeah. I don't really support it. Okay. But myself, I love gay people. We love gay people too. So, big gay people fans when it and respecters. Comes to, like mass productions of like human psyche trying to reach the media trying to reach us on all these platforms especially children yeah i definitely feel like there's some dark energy why do you think it always focuses <laughs> we have the god we need to respect god and you know all these this lgbt uh movements they're uh you know they're the i don't know there's there's some there's some dark energy going on there undefined uh we have a person in twitch chat that i can actually respond to here Strong an argument we don't know whether the guy in the video is for or against uh, ch kid beauty pageants. Um, number one, that's not what it means to make a straw man argument. Number two, sure, I would hope John Doyle is against it. But being in a city such as Texas, which is, you know, one of the relatively few states that still has this allowed and is making the whole, you know, sort of video on the concept of sort of conservatives against this whole child sexualization, which is all these people view as LGBT, um, that's where the issue comes into play. I'm against both of them. I don't think that there should be instances of like drag shows for children. I don't think that's a good thing. I don't think there should be beauty pageants for children either. And when you're in Texas, probably you should acknowledge the negative aspects in regards to the conservative iteration of that type of negative behavior instead of just railing on the progressive one. Um, bye, Eskimo. 
focus is towards children. Like it always starts with, with adults and things like that, but it always ends up towards children. Children are impressionable mm -hmm. and they're naive. True. So true. Well, are you from <laughs> these conversations are so stale. Holy shit. Um, now in regards to this, in regards to conservatives really freaking out when it comes to LGBT education stuff coming towards children or children being, you know, exposed to the type of things. If there is one demographic, just general a demographic within society that needs to be taught that the things that they are experiencing, that the way that they feel, the way that they identify as, and the struggles that they face isn't something exclusive to them, isn't something that they need to repress, and something they need to hide, isn't something they need to be ashamed of, it's going to be young people. It's often LGBT young people that face the greatest issues when it comes to harassment, discrimination, violence in some cases, a relationship with parents being thrown out of the household, and all of those types of things. And not being able to show to an LGBT you know, youth that, hey, it's all right. You're okay. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing you need to be ashamed of. There's nothing you need to hide. These people who are making these insanely hurtful comments about you or about the group you belong to, about a behavior that you identify with, it's those people who are in the wrong when it comes to these types of behaviors, okay? And that's something that needs to be like constantly remembered when it comes to these things, right? It's the people that are most vulnerable and that are in the most, you know, yeah, in the most vulnerable position that need the positive, you know, reinforcement and the support that an LGBT, you know, like community or education on those types of issues can provide to, you know, that type of child. It's best for, you know, be them, it's best for the people around them, it's best for their future, it's best for their mental health, best for their physical health. We need to, uh, this is something that needs to be added there whenever, you know, conservatives talk all the time about, well, it's too far when we tell kids that LGBT people exist, you know? But, yeah. From Texas? Yeah. From Dallas. Okay, we're from Fort, well, we just moved to Fort Worth from Michigan okay. about four Whoa. months ago. It's a big change. Big change, well, the politics weren't exactly that good up in Michigan. <laughs> okay. But that's actually, <laughs> that's actually why we're down here. We wanted to ask you because you look like you probably have an opinion on this. You know, last month we just got done with, with Pride Month. Curious to get what your thoughts were on that and what you think about how it's promoted. Yeah. In See, see how she's stepping away. She doesn't want to be there. She really doesn't. Media. I'm okay with it. It's just the other stuff that goes on. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the destruction of property. That's the only thing that just. Do you mind if we show you a couple pictures of some of this? Destruction of property in relation to LGBT rights? Stuff that they were promoting and just kind of get your thoughts on it? They, they want to leave. She's turning around. He's on his way to go. Well, we have a seven o'clock reservation. All right, I don't want to hold you then, but I appreciate well, your well, time. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Oh, geez. They're so awkward. Is this the best? Is this the opening? Oh, no. The utter state of the boomer. They are showing this to your children. They are molding their brains. Oh, hot damn, I just care about my property rights. <laughs> it's like, ah. Good guy, good guy. Well, I, I just want to know what the Texan <laughs> opinion on last month was. You know, last month was Pride Month. We were having parades. We were celebrating the LGBT community. We were, you know, on full display with all sorts of weird BDSM. Uh, excuse me, I shouldn't say weird. Uh, prideful BDSM stuff at, at parades that were being attended. Wait, wait, wait. What's BDSM? I love that question. That is when, uh, <laughs> I, how would you even describe that, Blake? Uh, I mean, essentially, it's when homosexuals and those similar torture themselves with leather and chains and whips and do it in public so the children can like see. Like Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay, so number one, that is a, a fucking terrible definition of BDSM. Uh, number two, the necessary conflation or the exclusivity of, like, BDSM as a type of sexual kink being inherently associated with LGBT communi communities is not the case at all there are plenty of uh, cis what's it called cisgender heterosexual couples that practice you know you know like kinks related to bdsm it's by no means something exclusive to you know the lgbt community by any chance and also the absolute utter state of john doe going up here asking random boomers about their case their take on like hardcore sexual kinks is it's quite an aesthetic you know but, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to get content, I suppose. Oh, 
In public. Right. Okay. And it's actually, it was argued in legitimate publications such as the Washington Post and opinion articles that that should be promoted at these pride events so that children have a proper education as to what being gay is actually all about. You look like a mother, am I wrong? You are not wrong. The mama bear instinct is kicking in. What are your thoughts? Was my jaw set like that? (laughs) Well, first of all, I think anything that has to do with teaching children about sexuality happens in the home and in private. Mm -hmm. I don't care. That is, and well, let's let her finish her statement. What you do and how you do it, but keep it private and respect other people's sense of morality. Very well articulated. I can. So what she just said here is the absolute perfect way to ensure that the next upcoming generation of children raised in these communities, number one, have no idea what the fuck consent is. Number two, have no idea how reproductive systems work. Number three, have no idea how genitals work. Number four, have no idea how STDs work. Number five, have no idea how to practice safe sex. And among about a million other things, number you know six, have no idea how to like prevent teenage pregnancies. Number seven, have no idea how to prevent, you know, like issues relating to, for example, the psychological aspects of, you know, sex and sexuality and stuff like that. And just about a million of other things, you know, in relation to that. This is a very, very, this is a terrible idea to lock away and to restrict education on arguably like a very, very important aspect of individuals' lives onto the quality that that's going to be taught by your parents. It's going to be extremely negative because you have no idea what people in some random like bumfuck town in the south is going to teach their kids about sex. And it's by no means going to be as comprehensive or have as many positive outcomes as more generalized, well-researched, comprehensive sex education that you can get in schools. So the position that she's arguing for here is going to end up with a worse situation from the perspective of children when it comes to their relationship to sex and sexual encounters and when it comes to their likelihood of being, for example, like assaulted or other negative things when it comes to like sexual encounters. It's going to lead to a cost for society because it's been shown that poor sex education has a direct effect on, for example, the likelihood of teenage pregnancy, among other things, uh, and, you know, the outcomes of, uh, of children whose uh, whose parents uh you know have them when they're teenagers is not very good and the cost in society for that as well you know for that child or for those parents is also pretty negative so yeah this proposal of just teaching sexuality and stuff related to sex education at the home is absolutely garbage when it comes from wanting positive outcomes i can tell you're a radio personality <laughs> blake show the pictures yes, ma'am. first thing that comes to your mind um do you know what that is? I have no idea. <laughs> now they're just showing a random music video. What does this have to do with Pride Month? What does this have to do with the LGBT movement as a whole? It's a raunchy music video. There are about 3 million other raunchy music videos. A lot of them very heterosexual in nature. But oh, here is one that is that has some some homosexual vibes to it. This is the one I show the conservatives' parents to get them outraged. No idea. There was a music video shot, and the concept of the music video was there's a, an African-American rapper who is homosexual, and the concept of the video was, I'm going to embrace this, descend into hell, have sex with Satan, to really just show all the, those uptight prudes that it's, it's totally okay. And th- that's part of the music video. This was, went viral on YouTube, and uh, that was shown to millions of children throughout the world. Shown to millions of children. It's on YouTube not shown to children any more than any other type of like music video throughout the entirety of like well i suppose digital history is like shown to children it's not like this is being showed in like grade school or whatever to everybody like it is just like i said again fear mongering and drumming up fears and insecurities are leading into stereotypes that conservative people have of i don't even know what we're talking about because this isn't even related to like the lgbt movement anymore well, first of all, if children saw that, parents, you need to be doing a better job of watching what your children are exposed to because you are the boss, they are the child until they're 18. So, and if- That doesn't sound like, uh, by any means, a, uh, you know, a helicopter parent, but let's keep going. For this gentleman that I'm watching, you know what? To- this is a fucking cool photo. Let's be honest, okay? This is a fucking cool photo. Very pretty, very sad. Anyway. Each his own, and what I would say is, bless his heart, I'll pray for him. What about when they bring children into it and they dress them up and they're like drag queens and they dye their hair and put on makeup? That's a little boy. 
fourth one I would say is where's that little child's mom and dad? It's so true. It's so true. And so, even once again, in one of the few red states in which, or one of the few states in which child beauty pageants are fully legal and are practiced regularly, but it's only bad when the gays do it. Otherwise, you know, it's part of our culture, right? It's, it's a conservative tradition here, you know? Um, you should probably have an issue with both of them, not just one. Mom and Dad, we need to be doing a better job with our children. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I'm by a grill now, so you know that I made it home safe. Okay, now he's gonna do an ad. Noticing here is a trend that I actually... Well, what is this editing? It's cutting into the middle of him speaking. ...predicted okay. before this. It wasn't recorded. Many of my best predictions aren't. But I'm still bathing in vindication, as I always am. People always ask me, John, does it ever get boring being correct all of the time? It actually does. It's, it's almost parallel to that one Twilight Zone where the guy loved to read, and then he wakes up, he's in the library, every book ever, and then he drops his glasses and he breaks his glasses. It's the same thing. It's like I am deprived of the excitement that, that is inherent to the possibility of being incorrect. It's a game for everybody else. Let the chips fall where they may. The coin toss. I don't have that luxury because I'm always correct. So you guys benefit, but I'm kind of, you know, I get bored. I get bored. That prediction was based- Ah, fuck, okay. We're, we aren't even halfway yet. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Basically as follows. We go down to a nice little wholesome Texan community here, a nice little tourist trap, and I expected to get a bunch of people saying, I don't really mind, you know, just find God, don't shove it in our face. And that's just really the case. So this tells us two things. It tells us one, that the conservative position in terms of uh, rhetorical approach to LGBT issues is incorrect, it's misrepresented. No one has contempt in their heart for these people. No one has malice, no one has hatred. It is simply, hey, find God, and also don't throw it in our children's faces, which is exactly what a decent person would predict. These are decent people. What are these camera angles <laughs> as well? Okay, besides from that, Hey, you want to know the reason why he isn't getting some fucking crazy responses, which he could be getting? It's, well, number one, he has control of the footage and everything related to the editing. So if he did get some crazy shit, he'd pro probably just, just, just get rid of it. Uh, number two, even if he didn't encounter a single one of these individuals here, it's still not the best idea to garner an opinion of what people actually think about these issues polls and just more like academic analyses on these topics do a lot better. Number three, he appears to be in a pretty sizable city. I can guarantee if he went to some rural little town in the middle of nowhere and had this exact interview, he'd be getting a lot of spicy answers. The rural and urban divide in the US is massive. It is massive. And you're probably gonna get some of the crazier opinions in relation to this in more of the rural areas than he's gonna get in this sizable city. Um, so that's reason number three. So um, this statement that he's making now does not logically follow from what has been presented in this video. And here we are. You want to talk to us? No. Oh, I mean anything. Literature, politics, art. All right. I'm a Republican. I will not get vaccinated. I refuse to get vaccinated. You're not going to infringe on my rights down here in Texas. Is that how we do it? If y'all hungry, come eat. We'd love to hear that. We just got done with... What's your name, by the way? I'm Cece. Cece, we just got done casual anti-vax stuff going on here <laughs> let's keep it going no crazy i love how he's talking about hey there are no crazy opinions here at all it's just you know conservatives being like hey it's fine whatever just don't do it to my kids literally the next interview fuck vaccines fuck the one piece of medical innovation that has literally been the greatest contributor in the increase of public health in the last few centuries no crazy opinions here folks just Regular old conservatism, I suppose, according to Mr. Doyle. It's on with Pride Month, right? Oh, okay. Pride Month. Gotcha. Well, uh, judging by your tone, I, I feel like you have something to say. Give us your 30-second your take on, on Pride Month. Um, it is what it is. I mean, if you choose to be a part of the LGBTQ, all for it, you know? You choose to be part. So while this might not be super, like, important here, it's, it's not a choice, right? We can know it's not a choice. We can know it's not just like simply, oh, I'm not gay anymore, lol, you know? Because if that were to be the case, then, hey, maybe the fucking terrible treatment that LGBT people get on a regular basis would encourage them to not be LGBT if it's something that they could just choose like that. And we know that, hey, just because you get fucking discriminated against super heavily, just because you get sent to conversion camps in which you're given shock therapy, that doesn't make you not LGBT. It just has 
incredibly harmful psychological effects for the people who are being subjected to that treatment. So if it was really a choice in the way that she's portraying it to be now, why the fuck would anyone pick to be LGBT given the treatment and the way that people treat them in society if it's just like such a super simple choice that she makes it out to be? No, well, that's just not something that I personally find, you know, it's against my religion, but all for it for anybody else. I just not a fan. <laughs> I've noticed hey, that Carol. too. I've noticed that as we've talked to different people around here, everyone is very just like, hey, it's against my religion, but do your own thing. No one has the, the hate in their heart that so many people ascribe to us simply for disagreeing with the narrative. Yeah. But that being said, I have some photos. Also, um, just because you interview someone on this, okay, they're not going to give their uncensored take when you come up with a camera crew and there's a guy in the microphone asking you about this topic. You're not going to give your like hardline take on it. Obviously, you're going to temper it down or you're going to water it down a whole lot. But number two, what you personally feel about stuff isn't really super important. The important thing is what effects your democratic participation have on policy drafting and the effect of those policies. So for instance, if you were to talk about a number of different policies related to LGBT rights or LGBT discrimination, ask people here, hey, do you agree with this? Do you disagree with this? We would get a lot more of an, you know, well-educated opinion as to what exactly the effects of, oh, these, you know, small, non-notable beliefs have on the uh, the well-being of LGBT people within their communities. What was I would like to show you? Okay. Your initial reaction. I don't like him. I don't like what he posts. I think that it is just very disrespectful to any and everybody who does have a religion, you know, basis against that, I guess. And you'll notice too that that video was like number one trending on YouTube. Also, the irony of just, hey, you can do what you want. It's not my religion, so I'm not gonna do it. And then here is this musician just doing their own shit, making a music video. This is hyper offensive to me because, you know, it's violation in my religion and yada, 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 you know? Like the, 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 this couldn't be like any better put when it's written. Like the thing, there's no extreme beliefs here. Hi, I'm an anti-vaxxer. Oh, you know, we don't mind as long as we, they don't force us to participate in it. This video is fucking terrible. It's disgusting. Like, you know, I don't even know what else there is to say. YouTube that was shown to probably tens of millions of children right. uh, around the world. What about this one? So I can tell you right now, a lot of the things that trend on social media based on like, oh, sorry, y'all, I just had a fly on my glasses. Based on everything that's trending on social media has to do with, I like the bigger picture, the deep state. I mean, they're putting things out on social media true. on what they want people to see, not based on what's <laughs> actually happening. Like, have y'all heard anything about the big explosion a hundred miles off the coast of Florida? No. No. Government blew up 40,000 pounds of bombs in the ocean gulf of mexico is on fire right now the rig out there it blew up i mean these are things that are seriously happening that are causing all these tropical storms to happen that you're not hearing about they're just talking about what they want you to t to hear okay oh holy shit okay she was showing a picture of an lgbt parade and then she talks about the deep state oil rig explosions which it wasn't the oil rig that exploded it was the underwater pipeline and how these are creating the tropical storms but she put tropical storms in quotation marks indicating that they're not actually like natural storms maybe some shit i don't fucking yo we there's no crazy opinions here by the way i swear to god is john doyle as like a psyop for the left now because like everything he says every argument he makes in between the like, interviews is immediately contradicted by the following interview i this couldn't even be better made if it was like written because they just want that division between the United States. Why do you think that they focus so much on those types of things and really just pushing that in people's faces as opposed to, as you alluded to, Bill Gates controlling the weather cycles? Because it has to do with covering things up. I mean, the government's behind so many things that nobody knows about based on what they're doing. They are putting things out there to hide the truth on what they're really doing because they don't want people involved. They don't want people to know. They don't want... Okay, I think John Doyle was joking when he made the comment about Bill Gates. But the fact that she <laughs> didn't react at all makes me think that they might not be on the same page about whether or not Bill Gates is controlling the weather. Maybe they are. And if I had to guess, that would probably be more likely for them to be on the girls' page than John Bowen's page. I don't even know what's going on. Anybody's opinion, they just want to go through with what they're doing. It's so true. I tend to reject the whole Disney, love at first sight. Oh, I, I really just love this girl. But when she said deep state, I felt something. But I don't know. I'm not, 
Maybe I'll go back and I'm gonna get a gum wrapper and just write, do you like me? Checkbox, yes, checkbox, no. And I'll just, I'll leave it and maybe I'll circle back and then uh, we'll, we'll see. She might be the one, boys, who knows? I could save her. Just kidding, Christ already saved her. That's the metric. Thinking you can save a girl is the wrong approach. Only Christ can save her. And maybe if you're a good enough man, then he'll give her to you, which is epic. I don't miss. I just don't miss. You know what I <laughs> Oh my fucking, is he a real human? Did someone kidnap John Doyle and replace it with like a machine learning program that just went over 4chan for the past four years? It's like one of those Twitter bots that just, <laughs> just fucking says random shit based on what they're exposed to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ooh, let, let's keep going. Last month was? Uh... <laughs> He's doing the math. March. Ma what? March? No, J June. Let's go! Do you know what June is? <laughs> I don't know. A month? It is a month, that's correct. Your, your score is neutral. June was Pride Month. Oh. What do, what do you think about Pride Month, oh. the guy? It's alright. It's yeah. alright? You're neutral? Yeah, I guess. Are you gay? Nah, hell no. Nah. Hell, Hell no! Nice. Hell yeah, no! Nah, nah, What's your opinion on the whole thing? The way it's being celebrated in the media, it's being taught to children now in public school. What, what do you think about that? You're from Texas. Yeah. What do you think about that as a Texan? I really don't care for it. Do you mind if we show you some pictures and just get your your immediate reaction? This is the reaction? most lackluster interview ever. <laughs> like you just have some mild homophobia from this guy saying, "Oh hell no, could never be gay," and then just dead responses and John Doe trying to build on that for some reason. Yeah, hell no. Okay, we got a hell no on that one. Second. That is tragic. One word, how could you describe this picture? Tragic. Tragic? Yes. These are worse than Caitlin Bennett interviews. Like, they're bad, but this... Holy shit, what the fuck is this? One word. I don't even know what to say to that. Right. At a kid's party? Yeah. Come on. What about... <laughs> See, it's interesting because for some reason as young men, we can't... So in regards to the drag time story hour, okay? There is, doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that specifically. Fucking kids love, like, frivolous dresses and, like, costumes and shit like that. So where's the issue with somebody in a, like, dressed up costume with a bunch of makeup and shit, you know, reading them children's books? Like, parents literally take their children to Disneyland to, to do, like, literally that. Just walk around with a bunch of people dressed up in costumes with a bunch of makeup and frilly hair, whatever, and to have kids, like, interact with them or whatever. But Drag Time Story Hour, that's where you draw the line. And then there was another of the kids' stuff, which is weird, and that we shouldn't fucking do. But yeah. and help, but we look, shouldn't do that. People shouldn't do. Look at that and just think, that's kind of silly. That's, that's a little bit silly. What if your son wanted to do that? I mean, it is what it is, to be honest. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, true. <laughs> He's getting no response back. Oh, I don't know about all that. Yeah. I don't know about all that. <laughs> Alright, man. <laughs> I don't know about all that either. <laughs> so, I think that he basically represents the, the forgotten gamers of America. The I can't do this. Do I have to finish watching this? Holy shit, okay, I'll do- I'll do- I'll do this- this last segment. I can't deal with these fucking forgotten gamers of America. Oh my god. Oh, okay. <laughs> Average up. young man in this country who we don't really have a strong opinion against that type of stuff, but we just know that when it's shoved in our face, we can kind of look at it and be like, and I quote, Nah, <laughs> about all that. It's just- we just, we just don't want to. And that's the problem. We were sold on this idea that it was just private individuals and the privacy of their own home or whatever, but such turned out to not be the case. And now we're at a point arriving very quickly where it's being pushed in the media, has been for decades, in public schools, and now you look at the rates. We're, his English doesn't even make sense. We're getting to a point, you know, really soon where it's being pushed in the media, it's been happening for decades. So are we getting to the point or has it been happening for decades, Mr. Doyle? Where, where are we, we, we getting to that 
like you know where, where, where are we where are we going with that not coincidentally of lgbt identification amongst the youngest generation and it's skyrocketing and the response to this is oh it's because they've always been 20 percent gay it's just because now it's an accepting culture or whatever if that were true you'd see the rates of self-identification increasing roughly proportionally amongst all generations because everyone would be living in this culture everyone would be like oh okay we can all come out now absolutely not so in your youth those are some of the most formative years of your life right it's at those times where you're able to you're more like impressionable the values that you internalize at that point are going to stick through you longer throughout life when you're older it becomes harder for you to just change your mind on stuff to accept and move with societal progress and all those different things so for instance hey if you are gay and for your whole life for like 60 years you've had to repress it and repress it because whenever you know that was being discussed in any circle around you you just be talked about how degenerate it is how awful it is how terrible it is you know how you know the moral condemnations of people who are that thing you're gonna repress it, you're gonna repress it you're gonna internalize all the homophobia okay 60 years later you're exposed to some like pride parades the culture becomes a bit more accepting your likelihood then of being able to overcome all these internalized negative attitudes that have been pushed towards you throughout your entire life and be able to openly express and identify with you being you know like homosexual is going to be much much lower than if you're young and you're growing up in such a culture and you never had to go through the terrible process of internalizing all this homophobia throughout your entire life or whatever types of you know phobia throughout your entire life and internalizing that has a lot of negative effects when it comes to like proclivity towards or like just like mental health issues and then all the million things that stem from poor mental health when it comes to job performance criminal behavior substance abuse and yada 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 so that's the reason why you know the uh, identification among older people may not be going up at the same rates as among younger people uh it's because of a bunch of inherent traits about different and older demographics compared to younger demographics so nice try but let's keep going that's not true. It's only in the younger generations is it skyrocketing, is it going up. All the other generations is staying about the same in terms of overall proportion. We also know that there's no biological factor in what manifests this other than perhaps prenatal hormone exposure, but science... We know that there is no biological factors to this besides this massively important part of your fetal development. That we're just gonna we're just gonna mention that and just ooh, move past that real quick. Your hormone unwashing is very very important for your outcomes in life, for your like biology, for your genetic composition, for just generally your like what who you are and what you're composed of. I'm not quite sure what the correct word is. It's very very formative and it's very very important for your future like well being and for who you will end up being future in life. So he's just skipping past that really quickly. Uh, but let's keep watching. ...has not found what's referred to as the gay gene. Decades of research, millions and millions in grants and funding, and they haven't found it. Come on, find the gay gene. Put it right here, put it right here. You can't do it. Somebody make an argument from environmentalism on this fool for me. Okay, now I'm playing ping pong. Okay, I can't do. I can't do this. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna respond to that final argument, and then I'm cutting in here because I can't do any more of these fucking skits. Okay. Um. So, when it comes to him saying there's no gay gene, can't do it. Can't do it, and then kind of cuts it off. There is implication being that clearly, society is turning these people LGBTQ, because if there's not a gene that does it, it has to be society and. Even if we completely skip past the hormone washing, which he just so briefly mentions in a way that he can't be called out for ignoring it, but also doesn't dwell on it in any significant manner, even if we accept that, there is still a number of inferences we can make from well-established data points that exist right now. We know that, number one, LGBT individuals exist even in spaces in which the culture is incredibly hostile towards them. And they're discriminated against heavily, they're sent to conversion camps, yet they are still LGBT. This seems to indicate that heavy environmental pushback against this has no influencing factor on whether or not an individual is likely to be LGBTQ. We also know this because conversion therapy doesn't fucking work. That's, that's another aspect of it. And it's terrible in about 9 million other ways. So we can determine that, hey, you know, just because it may not be like genetic, does it mean it's not very like closely held 
by an individual and isn't an inherent part of their identity that cannot be ostracized from them in any meaningful capacity. You know, working with that, we can see that his sort of inference here is that, oh, it's all coming from society doesn't seem to be true because if that were to be the case, if societal could, if society could like condition or decondition things, then number one, we wouldn't sh see the existence of LGBT people in cultures that are hostile towards LGBT people, of which there have been very many today and throughout history. And number two, we would probably see that heavy aggressive discrimination against an LGBT person or poor treatment would maybe un-LGBT them, which we also see is patently false. So he takes this massive leap of logic from there is no gay gene, which seems to be true from my knowledge, to this means that it's all societal conditioning and it can all be, can be, you know, put in and can be taken out and just leaves it at that. When we know that there are certain pieces of evidence that we can use to disprove that and illustrate that, hey, it's not just a choice. It's not something that is just conditioned into you and can be conditioned out of you by society. This just doesn't seem to be the case. Also, like Nayan points out in chat, homosexuality as a behavior has been exhibit not exhibited, but has been found, has been found in a whole range of different species and different organisms on the planet Earth. And to my knowledge, to my knowledge, the dogs and the lions and the dolphins aren't holding LGBT marches. Maybe they do. Maybe under the sea, the dolphins do it. Maybe, you know, the dogs do some crazy LGBT shit when we're out of the home uh, and they're being influenced by it. Who fucking knows? But just because there isn't a gay gene does by no means prove the notion that there is no inherent aspect to it and that it's all just societal conditioning. Uh, and then there is also a further argument that can be made. Okay, even if there was, where is the harm in individuals choosing if that is how this would operate, which it's not, who they want to be sexually attracted to and who they want to engage with or what they want to identify as. Where is that harm in that? Thought we were in favor of freedom here, goddammit. But I guess not. So that's another side argument to make, but it's not even necessary to make because um, there is no concessions that need to be made on the points preceding that. So yeah.